Trade associations are another prevalent source for external secondary information. Trade associations can be very useful to marketing researchers looking for topics on a particular industry or product category because trade associations tend to serve as advocates for all companies that participate in that industry. As such, they tend to have a vested interest in generating useful research that can be insightful and helpful to all members of that industry and in turn to marketing researchers studying that industry. Let me provide an example of how trade associations can provide useful marketing research for, our, for secondary research purposes by way of maybe my favorite trade association, the Brewers Association. The Brewers Association is the association that serves the craft brewer market. Bart Watson is the number one economist that does work in the craft brewing industry. And this recent study published in May 2020 reports on a survey of over 869 uh, craft brewing operations and their attitudes and behaviors in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the key insights from this survey is that the way that these craft brewing operations are distributing their craft beer has changed dramatically. Here, we notice that before the pandemic, most of the small craft brewing operators didn't do any type of delivery, whether by themselves or using a third party. By delivery, we mean at home delivery to actual consumers. However, nearly a third of all craft brewing operators now use some sort of direct home delivery model. On the other hand, we also observe that traditional distribution channels, we're talking about uh, we're talking about delivering beers to directly to bars or to corner stores or grocery stores. During the early stages of the global pandemic, a previous similar survey showed that many of the craft brew operators were extremely pessimistic about their ability to survive going into the future. However, as we see here, uh, many, many of the operators are now much more confident or optimistic that they'll be able to survive through 2020. For those who are actually optimistic, we have, an ide we have an idea of what some of the primary reasons were. Nearly two-thirds of them reported that because they received a government PPP loan, they were much more optimistic they'll be able to survive. Nearly half realized that their extremely pessimistic uh, sales forecasts didn't bear out. Also note here, about a third of them noted that their new sales channels were in fact successful, which probably relates to the fact that sales were better than expected for many of the craft brew operators. Finally, this survey indicates that the confidence that craft brew operators have in their ability to survive through 2020 varies depending on their business model. Regional brewers, these are the larger craft brew operations, think uh, locally like maybe a stone brewing as an example, tend to be much more confident that they'll be able to survive through 2020. On the other hand, smaller craft brew operators like brew prob operations, these are the kind of places where you typically go down to sit down and eat, and there also happens to be a small brewery in the same facility and you purchase their beer and consume on site. Obviously, these types of business models are much more affected by closures. Uh, they tend to be not nearly as confident as some of the other uh, business models in their ability to survive through 2020. This type of trade association research can be very valuable to marketers looking to do research in a particular industry provides insights about what pain points, what opportunities, what struggles, what advantages and disadvantages people operating within the industry are dealing with at a moment in time. Professional journals are another common source of useful secondary information for marketing researchers. Similar to trade associations, these professional journals are particularly designed to serve all of the members in a participating industry or product category. And as such, the information that they produce is often useful to marketing researchers conducting inquiries into that product category or the industry as well. In fact, marketing research is in of itself an industry. Perhaps the most popular professional journal for marketing research is Quirks. Let's give an example here from an article that came in February of 2016 that studied the impact of this length of a survey on completion rates amongst millennial respondents. Of course, marketing researchers are very interested in when people will or will not complete online surveys. In this study, serving the entire professional audience of marketing researchers directly answered that question, investigated that question, in particular in relation to how millennials responded. What we see here is a scatter plot, each dot representing a different study that this company actually conducted online. 
On the y-axis, we have the completion rate. So 100% would mean every single person entering the survey completed the survey. 55% down here would mean 55% of the people who started the survey actually finished. And on the x-axis, we have survey duration. So longer surveys are here on the right-hand side. If you look at the scatter plot, it's clear that as the survey takes longer, no surprise, there's a tendency for people, and particularly millennials, to be less likely to complete the survey. If we go back and read the actual article, we'll see that millennials are particularly more sensitive to longer surveys, suggesting that marketing researchers have to think about shortening their online surveys as we want to reach this millennial audience and gather information about them. Now, taking a look at the beverage industry as an example, there's numerous different professional journals that are available for the interested marketing researcher. This is a incomplete list. BevNet, Beverage Industry, Beverage World, Beverage Digest, Beverage Business Insights, all represent professional journals that provide insights into the beverage industry. Marketing researchers can make good use of this as well. Unfortunately, much of this information is hidden behind a paywall. You have to be a paid subscriber to actually consume the most important information that they have to share. Luckily, the SDSU library provides access to most of these articles through the online databases we're subscribed to. These professional journals aren't just journals. They have online blogs, YouTube channels, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. These can also be useful sources of information for marketing researchers. For example, Beverage World has a YouTube video that's an hour long talking about the entire state of the 2015 beverage market. 